In one voice, our nation must condemn racism, bigotry, and white supremacy. These sinister ideologies must be defeated. Hate has no place in America. Hatred warps the mind, ravages the heart, and devours the soul. Pretty powerful speech there from President Trump today. You heard him condemning the hatred behind two mass shootings erupting within half a day of each other over the weekend. The president moving very quickly to call out this hate where he sees it. But you've got critics now pointing out the proposals from the White House and Republican lawmakers today lack specifics. So uh, lots of critics, despite this being an extremely sensitive difficult time for so many people right now. Joining me with Reaction, Trump 2020 senior campaign advisor and daughter-in-law to President Trump, Laura Trump. Good to see you back here. Thank you. Um, it, you know, it, I hate to see these things become so political because I think that somehow, you know, we, we lose sight of the individuals. Absolutely. Um, that, you know, Garrett was just telling us about at the start of the show, uh, the individual families and, and the tragedy that it's happened to all of them. And yet, that's unfortunately, Laura, exactly what happens, yeah. it gets political. We've seen the Democrats now, um, one after another, come out and blame this president for this tragedy. It's, uh, What's your reaction? Listen, it's, it's unbelievable. First of all, you cannot blame anyone other than the people that perpetrated these horrific attacks for these shootings. I mean, it's, it's awful. Sadly, we are at a place in, in the past several decades where we have seen a rise in this. Mm -hmm. The president condemned it wholeheartedly. You heard right there exactly what he said. And instead of taking a moment and taking a breath and grieving with these families, mm -hmm. you saw that immediately the attacks were on President Trump. And of course, we all knew that would happen. Democrats running for president out there trying to capitalize on this, people fundraising off of this. It's disgusting and it's sad. But the reality is we have to think about what has changed in our society in the past several decades. Yeah. Why would this be changing? It happened under the Obama administration. It happened under the Bush administration, the Clinton administration. Now it's happening under the Trump administration, no president is to blame. But you think about what has changed, and the president talked about it today, the rise of the internet, social media, the 24-hour news cycle. These are all things that have changed in our society. And as such, these, I think, sort of acts and the, the individuals who clearly are mentally ill, clearly have major issues, uh, now have an outlet to online talk in these chat rooms, dark chat rooms yeah. and such. Um, so video I, games as well. Video and games, encourage exactly. All the violence. But I, I thought it was disgusting that anyone would come out and try and pin this on the president. But sadly, it is not surprising this day and age. Yeah, no, that's exactly what they're doing, and they're going to keep doing. And they're saying somehow he's responsible, that it's his rhetoric that somehow has created this environment. But to your point, this has happened before, and it's going to happen again. Yeah. Unfortunately, I think unless we really start to think long and hard about these issues. I mean, I look at it and say, if you have a mental illness, how the heck are you getting access to an AK-47? Well, right. I'm sorry, but that's just, you know, and you've got the gun lobby that's going to hate that. But the reality is, if you are mentally ill, you shouldn't have a gun. Right. Well, and the president pointed that out today, yeah. and that's something he wants more attention paid to, stricter background checks. We want to make sure that we know that the people are getting guns. And there are 300 million legal gun owners in this country, and the vast, vast, vast majority of them will never even consider doing something like this. You're, you have to be a sick individual to but do something like this. But that's courageous of him, let me just say, because, like, that's not an easy, you know. Of course. That's not an easy thing to take on, but he, I mean, it's, it's the obvious thing I think for him to say look yeah. you know we want a better background check system we want red flags and by the way where is society in all this right what about the schools right um, that might have seen some some indications of this behavior uh, workplaces etc well and he wants more people that's something else he talked about today he wants if, if you have any concern that someone you know someone that you work with your you know family member might be perpetrating something like this, might be considering it, you need to say something. You know, here in New York, we have the see something, say something. It's the same thing. We need to, to as Americans, as a, a society, start paying attention a little bit better and recognizing, because always after the fact, fact, Trish, there's somebody that comes out and says, you know what, we kind of thought this would happen. That can't continue. We have to start calling people out if we think there's a problem. Let me turn to some happier news, which is all the work you've been doing on the campaign front, and I know you've been traveling all across the country despite being very pregnant. Congratulations <laughs> yeah, thank on you. that, by the way. Um, 
What are you hearing from people? What are you hearing from women, I'm curious? Yeah, well, we launched our women's coalition a couple of weeks ago in Pennsylvania. We had over a thousand women uh, come out and, and support us, and we want to um, take that across the country. We want to expand that. And we really, the goal is to get women to talk to other women, because oftentimes I'll be on an airplane or even walking down the street here in New York, believe it or not, and women will come up to me, but they'll whisper. They'll say, you know, we love the president. Keep it up. Tell him to keep fighting. We want to make people feel okay to get out there and support this president. So we want to expand that across the country. And I think people are going to be very surprised in 2020 about uh, the numbers when it comes to this president. More, I think, minorities are going to vote for this president. More women are going to vote for this president than did in 2016. Uh, we think it's going to be a landslide victory. Um, and and I, I really do have a strong feeling that the, the media is going to miss it again, but that's okay. They can keep. Hey, what do you think uh, of the Democrats right now? Them. I remember you saying to me early on, you know, you can just sit back and grab the popcorn <laughs> and watch the debates and like laugh because they're basically going to blow themselves up. Is yeah. that what you're seeing? I mean, I think <laughs> anyone who's watched these debates is uh, it's pretty clear. I mean, the the ideas that are being proposed, if you contrast them with the success that you've seen under this president and his administration, you've seen economic success un that has been unparalleled in the history of this country in many aspects. The lowest unemployment we've ever seen in this country for many folks. Uh, contrast that with the Democrats who want full government control of everything. They want open borders. They want to abolish ICE um, and anti-law enforcement. It's a very clear choice, I think, when you break it down. Do you want to continue the success that we've seen over, over the past two and a half years under mm -hmm. this president? Or do you want to change? And you know what, Trish, if you decide you don't want to go to work tomorrow, I'll subsidize your life. I'll go ahead and, uh, and pay for you. That is not how America is built. This president has always believed in bringing back the American dream. It's happening for people right now. And I think people are going to want to see that continue. No, I, the whole socialism, you know, let's veer left thing, Very that, that doesn't play in Peoria, as they say. Yeah. Anyway, it's good to see you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Great good, to be with good you. Good to have you here.